G'day guys. Uh, today I have Cezé Coma from uh, WA in Australia. How are yeah. you Cezé? Yeah, doing good. Well, I'm very excited by today's presentation because we're going to be talking about SharePoint 2013 and all the goodness in search. Yeah. And uh, I haven't actually seen anyone talk about this in any depth other than a slide or two. So I'm uh, very keen to see what we're going to be talking about. That's great. So uh, do you want to tell us a bit about yourself first? Uh, yeah, so I'm a, a SharePoint Server MVP based in Perth, Western Australia. I help uh, facilitate and run the Perth SharePoint user group with a, with a bunch of guys out there. And I work as a SharePoint Solutions Architect for NEC Australia. So that used to be CSG and we got bought out by NEC. So yeah, so now I work for NEC. And yeah, I've been working with SharePoint for like eight or nine years, just specialising in that. And great. yeah, it's great. And uh, have you been working with um, SharePoint since the early days? Yeah, I started on the 2003 version, uh, so SharePoint Portal Server. And I got into, I was uh, initially working as a Microsoft Content Management Server okay. um, uh, developer and then started to get into SharePoint. And then when, when Moss came out, I was yeah, pretty much dedicated to SharePoint. Yeah. All right. So one of the big things in SharePoint 2013 was we got uh, search, like the expensive version of search, I yeah. think it was um, 20 grand for fast, which I think no one bought, did they? Oh, so mainly larger organisations, so big corporations right. who had the money to spend to, mm -hmm. you know, hundreds of thousand dollars on both the extra servers, the licensing and the implementation costs. So we only had a, uh, just a couple of our clients fork out for fast, yep. the rest had to just do with normal uh, SharePoint 2010 search. Yep. But now we get it all for free in the box, right? Yes, yeah, so Microsoft's basically grabbed SharePoint Search and Fast Search for SharePoint that we had in 2010 and redeveloped it all and it's all now Search in SharePoint 2013. So there's only the one search engine that's available for everyone to use and it, you get all of the goodness that we had previously, right. plus a lot of, lot of new stuff that wasn't even in Fast or SharePoint Search previously. All right, well, I'm keen to see it. Yep. Um, we have uh, deployed SharePoint 2013 for a few clients and yep. uh, we're running it internally. Um, we, we've just used search as it is out of the box. Yep. So what's the agenda today? Okay, so be uh, providing a, a quick overview of, uh, of search and SharePoint and how we, we got to the, the current version in 2013. Okay. Uh, a quick uh, description of the architecture and how it's sort of quite similar to, to Fast. Then I'll be going through all of the new stuff that we have in CERT. So we've got a number of demos. I'll be uh, providing an overview of the new CERT Center and all the new uh, UI cool stuff that we have in 2013. And then stepping through all the new stuff like result sources, result types, query rules, uh, new content search web part, um, and how we can control how results are rendered with display templates, and then describing some some other yeah really advanced features that we have in search. All right, so Cezay, so can I ask you a few questions before we get yep. into the history? Um, maybe because I can't uh, wait and I'm a little bit impatient. But there's a few things I've always wanted in um, SharePoint 2010 search. Yep. Um, when you get a result, is uh, previews? Do we get previews out of the box now? Uh, yes, so it relies on Office Web Applications. So if you have deployed Office Web Applications and onto the server, um, on uh, into your farm on a new server, right. um, and there's no reason why you shouldn't because there's no extra licensing costs uh, involved. Um, yeah, the Office Web Apps is leveraged to show previews of you know Word, PowerPoint, Excel. So I, I don't have to see the result. Not sure. Click the link. Yeah. Open up the PowerPoint. I can just see. Yeah. So that's a, a, a great new advantage of having the previews in there. It. In the past, users, users would have to uh, perform searches and you know, they might see a result and click it and it might be a 15 meg yes, uh, PowerPoint right. or Word document. Download it, open it up, flick through so and see. So will you be demoing oh. that? Uh, yes. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Um, there's a couple of other ones I would love to know if uh, are in there. Um, do you have, like in our intranet, there's a couple of things like if somebody ever searches the word salary, yep. we want a certain page to always come up. Yep. Can you tweak that? Will you talk, uh, yes. talk about so that? Yes, so in previous versions we had the whole keywords and best bets um, which allowed you to sort of tune uh, what search results are displayed yes. to uh, users. So with the new query rules and uh, uh, result blocks and the promoted results um, uh, that we have in 2013, it's a lot more advanced and tunable and configurable and a lot more powerful than okay. what we had previously had. So, so is, yeah. it, is it still called best bets? Uh, no, so best bets are now called promoted results. Promoted results. Yeah. All right. All right. Yeah. Cool. 
Um, sounds like a bit like Facebook. Uh, yeah. Um, I, it, it sort of makes a lot more sense. A lot of time with clients, you sort of explain best bets and then you have to explain what a best bet is. Right, and yes. Whereas promoted results, it's more, more obvious, logical and obvious. Yeah. Um, there's another one I would just love to know if you might be covering. When you uh, use LinkedIn yep. and you um, look at someone's profile, yep. it has this section over on the right, I don't know if you can recall, but it says um, people also view these people. Yep. So if you search for, say, a document, yep. I'd love to have something similar where it just shows me those ones. Do you yeah, yeah, so uh, there is a whole new recommendations engine built into uh, CERT. So uh, one, I guess, key new architectural difference is analytics is now a part of CERT. So okay. uh, it even uh, affects how if uh, over time people are uh, making searches and users are clicking on specific results, the search engine learns from the usage of users mm -hmm. to change the ranking of results. You can also build uh, leverage on that framework to uh, build uh, solutions that recommend content related to what a user is currently viewing. Um, right, okay. So pretty cool. Um, so that's based on, uh, so will you be touching on that? Uh, just, no demo on that, but just explaining the okay. concept around oh, cool. it. Yeah. Um, one more thing, if I can. I don't know if you'll have this one, but you know when someone searches for something and they're yeah. looking for something, they're, they're actually trying to find one particular document. They're yeah. starting right now and then they try multiple ways. They, they, I, I wish that there was some way where you can say, I found it. I finally found it. And all that stuff that I just did before, yeah. I found it. Yeah. Um, how, does it how does it work out whether people... Uh, are finding documents or not? Is there any, um, any magic in there for that stuff? Yeah, so, so with the a a analytics again, so over time as a large number of users use the system, mm -hmm. it learns from that. Um, so it's similar to how you had the suggested searches in, in 2010. Um, so Fast Search previously had this, it was called uh, click-through relevancy. So you now if you've got a large... How does it know if you found it or you didn't find it? Ah, okay, so yeah, I think it does that based on a large number of users end up finding the right. same thing that you're finding. Right, okay, fair so enough. As sort of, yeah, law right. of averages. Cool, let's, uh, let's get into the history. It. Okay, history of SharePoint. So, uh, search has been in every version of SharePoint since the very first version. So, with each new version of SharePoint that's been released, Microsoft's improved on it and built on top of it. Um, Although, you know, when, it, when, when we got to like the 2007 version, there was still quite a lot of customers and people who did not, you know, they'd complain and whinge about search, about, you know, how crappy it is. So Microsoft went out and purchased a, a company that uh, built a really nice search engine. So the company's called Fast Search and Transfer, a Norwegian-based company, and they purchased them in 2008 for 1.2 billion US. And I think they paid a bit too much. You reckon? Yeah. Well, I think so. Well, it's a great <laughs> product they, they came with. So the, yes. you know, Microsoft tried building a similar search engine themselves and then decided, hey, we'll buy this one that you know, yeah. seems to be better than what we've, we've built. So um, I, I don't say that they paid too much because it wasn't worth it. Yeah. I say that they paid too much because uh, there was some controversy, I don't know if you remember, but they included a whole lot of um, sales stats from customers that haven't hadn't bought it that ah, like, okay even Telstra you mean. Australia yeah. Yeah. had only downloaded trials but okay. I had I read some articles how that they were including figures yep. from people just downloading rather wow. than so, okay. so Microsoft might have um, interesting had yeah. to pay a little a little few extra dollars for it. Yeah. So shortly after they purchased that uh, that company and their fast DSP product, they started to work at uh, having a version of that available for SharePoint 2010. So yes. you're talking like a real short uh, time to build a um, build that into SharePoint 2010. So, so what ended up happening during the release is uh, instead of having the one search option uh, it, they had it as an add-on product, sort of That's like right. a bolt-on with extra servers and a, a separate install and, and it's it sort of... Yeah, so... Uh, and it was expensive too. Yeah, so. yeah. And like, I've done... I spent... Uh, a lot of the last few years specializing in fast search implementations and it's like you know a whole other product you gain specific experience and skills in deploying and tuning fast search and I mean it's good for consultants like myself who yes who had specialized in it so what has been your first impression of 2013 just just uh, overall well it's a lot simpler right so you get uh, all a lot of the good, goodness that we had with fast search in in 2010 uh, but it's now baked into SharePoint search so the experience of setting up and configuring it is like how it was when 10, 
2010 uh, search, which is nice and simple, so you don't have all that extra complication that we had with, you know, having to know fast specific knowledge to get it going. So yeah, it's like the, the ease of deployment that we had in 2010, but all of the rich functionality that we had with fast, so right. it's great. So yeah, as, as we explained, we've, we've had a search engine in each version of SharePoint uh, in the past. When Microsoft a acquired the fast search and transfer company and their fast DSP product, uh, we had two options in 2010, the more advanced fast search for fast search server 2010 for SharePoint and the SharePoint 2010 search. So what's great now is in with 2013, there's, a, there's the one search option Thank available. Goodness. Yeah, Amen. Yeah, <laughs> keeps things simple. All right. So architecturally, right, uh, SharePoint 2013 search is, has a lot of similarities that we had with, with fast search. So in fast search, we had a, a document processing pipeline which allowed you to extend the processing of content before it's stored in the index to do some really cool stuff. So with that, we ha now have a content enrichment web service that uh, provides that type of functionality. Uh, we also have analytics built into the search engine. So that's a, a key architectural difference compared to previous versions. So that means as users use search and use content within a site, this analytics processing uh, processes that information and it feeds into uh, uh, changing how search results are returned and ranked and right. uh, so the, it's like the search system is self-learning it learns from user behavior of the okay. system okay so when you're on the browser and that the orange it calls this new looking analytics processing engine which has all the extra goodness on is that where yeah so it, it analyzes uh, user behavior and then that information is then fed into the content processing right. uh, component and then also into the index so it affects right. future um, search queries. So that, yeah, that should make a big difference to the relevancy of results. Yes, yeah, it uh, okay. does. Yeah. Okay, cool. It's great. Okay, so this is a, a similar, uh, I guess, illustration of the architecture. It, although it, it illustrates all of the different types of content sources that we have, um, we can crawl with search. So the key thing with enterprise search is a lot of customers just index the SharePoint content. Mm. A, a lot of them don't know you can index. Um, file shares, websites, but a key one is uh, other ECM systems. So a lot of organizations don't do records management in SharePoint that have an uh, EDRMS system. So there's uh, companies out there that sell connectors, so you can pretty much get uh, content from uh, most enterprise content management uh, systems into into search. So these are things like Lotus Notes, Documentum, uh, potentially you know Trim, uh, Open Text Hummingbird, yeah, so there are, you can find connectors for most ECM systems. So the way that I think a lot of companies do it is using BCS. Yep. Is that um, representing this diagram? Uh, yes, so that is the, the, the custom uh, option. So with BCS you can use that to uh, implement search over database con content. So say you've got structured yes. content in a database or a web service or whatever you can hook into BCS right. with which is pretty much ev everything, right? You can um, uh, allow the crawler to crawl that data source via the BCS and then right. have a search experience over the top of that. So in our company, we have more and more of the content that we develop on, it, on Facebook. Yeah. For, and we run a lot of our events off Facebook and yeah. LinkedIn and things like that. So if you're bringing that so in via BCS, yes, then yeah, you should be able to search or right. create a search experience over that. That's how so we do it, yeah. Awesome. All right. So search engine basics. So I mean, I like to describe this because not a lot of people understand how you know search engine works. So a search engine basically goes out, it crawls content, it processes that content, and it stores that content in, in an index. Over the years, as search engines have gotten more advanced, the, the whole processing of the co content has gotten a lot more advanced, and you'll see this with the, the 2013 version of search. So when content's in, it, in an index, it's in stored in an optimized fashion to allow fast queries. So people always wonder, how does Google work? I can search the entire internet and get you know, <laughs> results in a second. It's because the data is stored in an optimized fashion across many servers to facilitate fast query responses. If I had a SharePoint administrator and they didn't know this, yeah. uh, there'd be serious problems. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, another sort of b basic concept that you have with search is your search schema. So when you crawl content, uh, Say, for example, you've got a, a, a document that's based on a content type and it has different fields of information. Yes. Uh, all of those fields of information are picked up as crawled properties. 
Uh, and Can you give me examples? Uh, yeah, so for example, the title field um, in a, in a, um, for, for a, a content type that's uh, detected as a specific crawled property. And uh, so say if you've got like an author field or the date modifier field, they're all different fields of information related to a piece of content. Mm. So other fields of information that come through are things like, you know, the, the URL it's in, the, the site it's in. So that all of these sort of parameters can then be individually queried um, later on if you want to implement but a more advanced search But how does SharePoint engine. search know that's a title property? Okay versus when it just finds a HTML page and... Right, so with, dependent on the source of content, so if it's indexing a piece of uh, content, like a, share, a document stored in SharePoint, it um, right. processes that differently to say if it's just hitting a regular web page. So but even with a regular web page, it's able to pull out different bits or fields of information um, from that specific piece of content. But are you only referring to Documents stored in SharePoint. You know, I know. So this types? is this is this is everything, right? Okay. So, um, dependent on the the type of information it is. Say, for example, you Im implemented a BCS search over a database. Each uh, column return from your query that's coming through BCS will be detected as a crawl property, if you know what I mean. Okay. Uh, so. There are the core properties that the search engine picks up, but then you have a whole other layer of properties that are called managed properties. So the managed properties are what you query against. So you create managed properties, and then you can call them whatever you like, and you can map them to one or many crawled properties. So the, the way that works is, you know, you might have a title managed property, and you'll map that to like a SharePoint title, and say a title from a web page, and so you'll have different types of crawled properties that you can then sort of merge together into a managed property to have you know, a more common uh, search experience over different types of content. Okay. Yeah. okay, so now we'll get into some demos. All right. Great. So uh, for this uh, initially we'll, here I have my uh, Office 365 developer tenant. Um, oh, I just saw the, uh, is that the preview feature? Yeah, yes, yeah. so uh, we have, uh, the reason I'm demoing this specific one in Office 365 is in my VMs, I haven't set up an Office Web App service, so this preview feature leverages Office Web Apps. Um, and yeah, you, it's quite neat, so you can basically mouse over and then mm. um, click through the content. You can also see these different um, links to specific sections within the content. So Microsoft is calling this pop-up a hover card, and so that's uh, some examples of PowerPoint. So they're uh, called preview hover cards. So that pop-up right. in itself so uh, is called a hover cart. So here's uh, examples of a, of a Word document. So you can see it's loading Word Web App. Nice. And yeah, you can just go scroll through a Word document just like that. It's quite, quite handy. So th this avoids the whole you know, downloading large documents and then you know, not finding what you want and going back. You can you know, inspect the content in each individual result mm -hmm. before you, you go and access it. So that's quite neat. So another so, neat... Uh, um, yeah. I didn't understand the difference between a preview yep. and a hover card. Ah, oh, okay. Can you show it again? So the hover card is that, and the hover card features the preview within it. So the hover card is just this pop-up. Oh, right? the whole thing. Yeah. And the preview is just the document. Yeah, yeah. Got it. Okay. Is okay. there any other things that they have other than the hover cards? It's just the hover cards. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so. Another um, sort of pain we've had in the past is being able to filter an individual document library. So what's awesome now is you have this search box uh, on, a, on every document library and from here I can do a specific search. So if I search for say hosting and... I hated that that was missing. Yeah. I always wanted that text box. Yeah. So this is probably just warming up. Could I call that a bug? Um, a bug fix. Yeah, so a, a, lot of, a lot of users had issues with the ability to, to filter down a, a document library, right? Especially when you ha they start growing into a large uh, volume, so you get hundreds of, um, you know, or thousands of documents in there. So now I'll get into demo some of the, the features of, of the new search center. So here's the home page of a search center, simple search box. So I'm going to perform a search for myself. I like searching for myself. Um, so here I've done a search for myself and you can see um, it, it, it's initially detected that my name is, matches a person's name 
um, from user profiles, right? Very nice. So it's suggesting, you can see with this uh, bracket here, um, in nice, a result nice block, yeah. yeah, people named, uh, says a, if I mouse over that, the hover card displays the you know, documents, documents that done. I have uh, authored. I would love to see the ones you've favoured as well. Oh, okay. Mm. Yeah, mm. that would That'd be, be neat. neat. Yeah, yeah. So then below that, we've got documents that I, I've authored as well, which is sort of the same as what right. was displaying here. Then if I scroll down, there's sort of video results in, um, with previews as well. Great. And that's quite neat. So down here, I've got a conversation result. So I, you know, was in a conversation and or was mentioned in a conversation by another user. Right. Um, Great. So. So it, it's neat. One thing you'll notice is different types of results are rendered differently. So that's done with the with display templates. So now if I go to so that's kind of what I meant yeah. before. You know, when you uh, this this guy that pops up. Yep. On its name. Hover card. Hover card. See that looks a little different than the other one. Yep. Yeah. It doesn't have a preview inside it. Yeah. So this yeah, it's uh, rendered differently depending on the the type of result it yeah. is. Yeah. Very right. nice. So now we'll get on to uh, the next link. So this. These different links up the top were, were called, I think, search tabs uh, in 2010 and with search scope. So now I think Microsoft's using the terminology search vertical. Search vertical. Yeah, sounds cooler, doesn't it? No, yeah. it sounds just as bad, but yeah. that's all right. Yeah. So here we can uh, search for people. So a nice new addition that we have to people search is if I search for a term, say, I know where uh, capital expenditure. So it's, I've got two results. Uh, and it's showing people who've written about capital expenditure. So for example, Dan Jump here, CEO, he doesn't have anything about capital expenditure in his um, AD fields, or he hasn't added, oh, added anything about it. it's looked inside the documents yes, he's written. Yes, so he's authored mm. documents, and in his documents there's that text great. in there. So it's great, you know, you can search for stuff, and if you do a people search, it oh. suggests people who have written content related yes. to uh, yeah. what you're searching, so that's awesome. Uh, so if we then step on through to conversations, so you would have seen all the, the new uh, social fe features. Uh, so if I just do a sh search for SharePoint, so all of the new newsfeed and the community site template um, and all that new social stuff that we have in uh, 2010. So there's a whole search vertical just for that. So you can filter your searches down to specific uh, conversations or you know social things that are happening within SharePoint. And you know as I mouse over, you, you're seeing you know the actual conversation. Um, in the hover card there, and you can jump straight to the conversation. Can, can you jump to it? Just wouldn't. Uh, let's have a look. Yeah, so okay. there we go to a specific um, yeah conversation that we've searched okay. for. Great. Okay. Um, SharePoint. Okay. So then the last one is video. So this is great. You've got a whole uh, search vertical just for video. So I know I'll just do a search for the site collections name. So I've done a search, you get these nice thumbnails, yes. and I can just mouse over uh, a video and just play it straight there in the browser, right? So, okay. Fantastic. Yeah. And if you right click on that, is yeah. that Silverlight? Uh, uh, no, so I believe it's HTML5. HTML5. Yeah, Beautiful. yeah, that's awesome. And you can change the play speed and yeah, do all the cool stuff. So okay. that's quite noisy, so I'm just gonna stop that there. All right, okay. so. That's a quick overview of uh, the new set center that we have in 2013. That is a great so, experience. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, another thing I'll, I'll just quickly you, you touch didn't on. You show, show that, those things. The on stuff the on the side. All right. Yeah. So up the top, we've got the result type. So you would have uh, seen in the previous version that we had like a, an item count next to those. So I think may, maybe Microsoft decided that having those numbers there isn't valuable and it's nice and clean not having the numbers mm. there. So I wish, um, they, I wish we had them. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so I mean, some users would prefer that. So, so um, we actually um, gave this to our 2010 clients. Yeah. We installed this add on called Faceted Search. Ah, yes. yes. Yeah, yeah. And so, it kind so of I mean, that. this stuff is extensible. You, like, you can write your own controls and mm -hmm. uh, have it down there, down the side. Yeah. So, an example of this is this modified date slider, right? So, I can sp click on one of these specific bars here. Yep. So, you know, one year ago, um, and then it automatically filters, or I can use this slider here to, you know, uh, Refilter my searches, uh, which is sort of yeah, and it just instantaneously searches. So, really nice. so that's quite cool. And then you have got the author field, and yeah, I mean that's customizable. So depending on your content and what managed properties and core properties you have in your uh, in your search index, you can customize those refiners. You know, Perfect. however you like. So that's a nice, I guess, 
demo of, um, at a high level, of the, the basic new search functionality that we have in, in SharePoint. So uh, just a quick recap of that. We've got our uh, preview of uh, PowerPoint and uh, Word documents. You also have preview of SharePoint pages as well. Oh, so uh, in that image of the entire page? Uh, no, so I believe it sort of displays it in an iframe. So we briefly saw how when you, when you do a search, say if it's a person's name, it shows different blocks of, of search results. So in this situation, they're, they're called uh, result blocks and they're actually different searches that um, the search engine's executing. So yep. it's doing a number of queries when it's showing search results. Um, we showed the nice enhancement to people search where um, it searches for content that people have ordered and then suggests that person as a, as a result. We've got search over conversations and all the social stuff, and we've got a nice new video search. Mm. Um, and the awesome search within a document library, right? So that's, right. that's all quite useful stuff. That's okay. probably the most useful, that one. Yeah, yeah. So on to result sources. So <laughs> one thing if you're like getting up to speed with search in SharePoint 2013 is you'll notice there's a lot of new terminology and um, you know words. I'm already um, guessing. This is search scopes, is it? Yeah, so result sources is a replacement for both search scopes and federated locations that you had in, in 2010. Okay. Um, so they're now called result sources. So the way they work is you apply a query transform against the entire search index to return a subset of it. So say if you want to, I know, create a search experience that only search, searches across a specific site collection or a specific type of content, you'd use a result source uh, to do that. So wherever you used scopes previously in 2010, um, what's neat is they, can, they don't have to be created at the search service application level. You can create them at the site collection level and at the site level as well. So that's quite neat. Um, and you use them when you're creating like a new search vertical uh, for a search tab. All right. So result type, so it's also a new, um, a new term in, in 2013. So a result type is, is used to control how individual types of um, content are rendered. So uh, they, an example of that you know, is say a Word document um, that uses a different display template compared to say a people search result or a video result. So, the result types sort of define the different types of content and then you can associate those to a display template. So a display template is like a, um, a, a replacement of the core results XSLT we had in previous versions. So it's all now HTML and JavaScript based right. and um, yeah, it's great. So in this next demo, I'll provide, I guess, an overview of result sources and uh, result types. Okay. All right, so, okay. So here we are, we are back to um, our, our cert site. So just to, to, to demonstrate this, I've, I had created another site collection at uh, slash site slash project. So it's okay. a basic project site collection. And in here I've got two subsites and the subsites have got uh, finance related documents and I've you know, created a you know, capital expenditure, purchase order and invoice content type and just uploaded some documents and associated them to that to those different content types, just so we've got something to, yes, to demonstrate the search across, right? So let's say uh, you're asked to create a specific search vertical that just searches your project site collection. Okay. So if we go to our search site. So when the user is searching, they know it's in one of the project sites. Yes, yes. Okay. So you know, you're not interested in all the other crap that's out there Perfect. in all, the, all your other different sites. You, you want, you're focused on a specific um, search result. Could you just go back for a sec? Yeah. Um, when they search, are you going to be adding an extra, what do we call yes, it? Yes, vertical. Uh, vertical. So you see how we've got the everything people, yes. conversations and videos. We can add another one there okay. for users to click on Great. to uh, filter their searches. So we'll go into site settings. Um, so now we're an administrator, right? Yes, yeah, yeah. so an admin could go in or a power user who's been given the privileges to do this at the site level. Uh, so we'll go in and you'll see there's a whole section on search related configuration. First up is result sources. So we'll click on that. You'll see a whole number of existing result sources in here. So what I'll do is create a new one. So this one we'll just call it projects. Yep. So this is our um, result source for that site okay. collection. So you've got an uh, option here for protocol. So now how I previously explained, um, we had the federated locations is now can now be taken care of with result sources. That's, That's right. where you do it. Today we'll just do a local SharePoint results. 
um, keep it with regular SharePoint results and not people results. Could I just ask, can yep. I just see the exchange option there? You can yep. um, actually make it go against your exchange server. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. it'll go in and uh, crawl that and then so you can have a specific result source against that. And with open search, that's a, a sort of standard, uh, like an API protocol standard for that a lot of search engines implement. So right. you could potentially uh, use this to hook into other search engines to Fair show enough. results from that, which is quite neat. Okay, so the most important bit is this query transform. So in here, we've just got a search term. So I'll click on this launch query builder. So what, what's neat with 2013 now is you have this query builder that helps you uh, build and validate search queries, right? Uh, and you'll see it, it, this thing pop up in a number of different places. So in this speci specific example, what I want to do is, I know there's a, a site managed property that defines like the URL uh, for, a, for a site. If I go in and sort of paste in my site collection URL with a star, um, we're adding an extra filter there. So whenever don't, someone does a search with this result source, it uh, filters down to only content within yep. my project site collection. So you even have this test query button here. So if I click on that, yeah, you, you get immediate results to validate whether you know your queries, you know, or your filterings work Can correctly. Can you just make a little mistake, get rid of the colon or something? I just want to see what happens. Okay, so yeah. let's get rid of the colon and test that, and we get nothing. Right, so so okay. uh, let's bring it back. So so that is quite handy. And um, how do you know what all the uh, keywords are? There's no IntelliSense or. Okay, so um, no, the uh, the site and all the others. Ah, okay, so you would look them up in your search schema. So you um, either at the site level or a search service application, you can go in and have a look at your different managed properties and, and make use of okay. um, make use of those. So cool. So I'm happy with that. I'll create, click OK and then click Save on that result source. So now we've created a result source. I'll go back to uh, my search site and. What I'll do is create a page. So just basically come in here, add a new page, call it uh, project results. Uh, right, this is the results. Yeah. So one thing you'll notice with all of these different search verticals is they have their own uh, uh, search results page, so mm. with a different URL. So after creating our page, we'll come in here and edit the search results web part and change the search criteria. So what we're going to do now is change this page to only uh, return results from projects. So yes. under select a query, we can see my new projects uh, uh, result source in there. Let me select that, hit OK. So now this page will only show results from uh, that specific site collection. OK, so we can see that sort of demonstrated with the different URLs that we have in here. Um, but just to demonstrate that, I don't know if we do a search for like a file extension, uh, not that one. Docx. So we've got you know, you know, a, a number of different documents uh, returned here. If I flip back to my everything search, you've got like quite a larger number of um, search results in there, right? Um, but so now that I've clicked away, I can't actually navigate back to that. So let's fix that. If we go in, what I want to do is add an, a hyperlink that takes me to that specific page. So go into site settings and then click through into search settings. So here we have a configure search navigation which controls those links that are at the top of the page. So let's add a new one. We will call it projects. And if you know the URL, you can paste it in or just simply click browse and it presents pages within there. And if we go to, I think it was project results, select insert, OK, and that's done. And then scroll down and click OK. And now if we go back to our search and, and search for um, invoice and then click on projects, there we go. It's right, that nice. links there. Now we've, we've created our own search vertical that mm. only you know, searches a specific subset of content. Mm. And you know, all of that was done quite easily. And nice. you could get someone, you know, uh, like a power user to, to do this sort of thing because all of the configuration was just in the site settings. It wasn't even at the site collection settings mm. uh, level. So um, that's um, really impressive. I yeah. I hesitate when you said power user because yeah. I didn't expect the experience to be as good as that. Yeah, yeah. So um, yeah, so it's a lot more powerful now. Previously, to do this sort of thing, you'd have to start talking to people who are more technical. So you know, your developers and administrators, because right. you'd have to go in and 
uh, create and configure the scope in um, in your cert service application. And with Fast, you used to have to run PowerShell uh, to create right. cert scopes to do all this stuff. And um, and they needed central admin. Yeah, yeah. So uh, a lot more difficult to do. So that's quite neat. You can you know create your own search vertical quite easily. All right. Uh, so another thing I'll quickly show is uh, result types. So if we go back into our site settings and we go into result types, it sh simply li lists uh, a bunch of different types of results. And so you can see uh, uh, conditions related to um, how these are matched. And then on the right hand side, we've got result action. So it says, you know, display results with this template. So here we've got a mapping to different display templates. So this controls how different types of results um, are rendered differently. So if you, if you wanted to, you could come in and, you know, tweak this stuff to change how a specific type of content is rendered. So if you're indexing new types of content that aren't already defined here, you have the ability to extend it and control how individual pieces of content are rendered in search results. Just a quick overview of that demo. We went into our site settings and um, started clicking through some of the search related site setting uh, links. Uh, we went in and added a new result source, uh, gave it a name, um, and then for a query transform, we applied a filter to only show results from a specific site collection and gave it a test and we got results. So what would have happened if yep. we didn't have the search terms in brackets there? Uh, I believe it will just, irrespective of what the user type, oh, always right. search for that. So okay. that would yeah, not work very well. All right. So after defining that result source, we went in and created a new page in the uh, search center and then we changed the setting so that it only showed results from the, our new result source. So, you know, that page is only shows results from that specific result source, nicely filtered down. So after doing all that, we wanted to add a link up there in, you know, where we had, yeah, for the search vertical so users can actually get to the page cool. that we'd created. Otherwise, there'd be no way to navigate to it. Uh, so quite easy. And then we do a search and we've got content filtered to that specific site collection. All right. So that's result sources. So on to query rules. So this is yeah, one of the more awesome features um, in SharePoint 2013. So the closest this is uh, similar to in previous versions is query rules. So query uh, is, sorry, keywords and best bets. So the whole idea around that was people would do searches and not find what they wanted and yeah, basically complain about search or, or you'd get uh, people testing searches out, say for example, leave form, and the leave form is on the third page, and yes. you know, it's pretty silly. So, so they, so best bets allowed you to uh, show a specific result right up the top of, of the search results. So Cezay, didn't you call this um, promoted results before? Uh, so promoted results is the new name for best bets. So promoted results is only one small aspect of query rules and um, how they, and they work with uh, promoted results. So query rules, they're used to understand uh, what a user's intention is around okay. uh, searching uh, and they're used to deliver a real targeted search experience, right? Uh, so query rules, they have query conditions that fire a query rule and then based on that you can then have uh, actions that occur when that query rule is fired. And you also have a publishing feature where you can, you know, schedule when this is enabled from a specific okay. date, right. start and end time. All right, so moving along. All right, so user intent. So here are some examples from Google. So a lot of people would be aware of these types of examples where, you know, Google knows you're not searching for that specific text. You're after a specific piece of information. So it's understanding what the intention is behind that. So, and then it show, throws up different types of controls based on that. Um, so for example, currency converters, weather, shows you the time, definitions for words, I think there's like uh, ASX uh, or stock codes and a whole lot of other examples where, um, yeah, it throws up a nice control that users can interact with. I actually use the bottom two, the most, yep. the most common. Yep. And it is the one feature that is missing from Bing yep. that makes me keep switching back to Google. Right. Yeah, and yeah. it really annoys me. There is one other one and that is the flight number. Ah, oh, cool. So you can just put your flight number yeah, in. Yeah, it tells me where it's landing, yeah. where it's taking off, and that type cool, of stuff. Cool. Yeah. And I th that might be on Bing and not yep. Google, but I ah, can't okay. recall. Yep. But so it's it's cool stuff. Um, so we've moved on from the days of where we'd, uh, you know, you're just doing text searches within content. The search engines these days they understand what your intention is uh, behind it. So another good example of that is Siri. So 
with Siri, it, she understands your natural language and your question and uh, then tries to understand your user intent and suggests uh, sort of search results to you. So it's a user intent based uh, search result system. So, uh, you know, you could ask her, I might need to hide a body and she will suggest different places where you could hide a body or if we move on, you know, in this specific example, um, Siri is also got an in intention there for you not to do harm and suggest some mental health agencies fairly close to you. So, okay. interesting. All right. So, demo time. So, now I'll demo uh, query rules um, and result blocks and show how we can tune or create a search experience that uh, understands user intent. Okay. So, if we go to our site settings and scroll down, we have before you do this, yep. would you be able to tell me what, what are you about to do? What, what okay, so I'm search? going to create a query rule. Yep. Um, so let's say, for example, uh, I'll say a good example is uh, those the Google examples. So say in your organisation you use different types of acronyms. Um, yes. So in this case, I think I've got a, a whole bunch of documents in there that are based on a purchase order content type. Right. So you might refer to them as a PO. A PO. So yep. if, if someone writes PO, you want them to find purchase order? Uh, yeah, so if you if you do a search and they you know search with some text and you have PO either at the at the end of it or before it does a search but then filters down where the content type is a purchase order right so it's a similar thing to those right. um, those Google examples so we'll go into query rules and first select our result source we want this to work in so that you can do it to all sources so we'll just apply it to projects in this and situation similar you think a power user can do this. Uh, yes, so I mean, the whole query builder, you know, allows will allow you to build up some of these queries. I think cool. so. Uh, if we click on new query rule, we'll give it a name. Let's call it a PO rule. Yeah. So here we have a number of query conditions. So uh, the specific example I'm going to use today is this contains action term, but these other examples should be explored. So they're detailed on tech, TechNet. So there's a number of really nice ones. So for example, this query matches dictionary example, uh, dictionary ex exactly. What you can do is import from a ter term store. So previously, when you defined bets, be best bets with keywords and synonyms, uh, a site collection admin had to go in there and be able to add you know, different synonyms over time. What you could do is have that sourced from your managed metadata. Uh, so you select the term set, yes. and then as terms are added to that term set, mm. they will act as like synonyms for a specific search. So it you know, brings the power back to the user to be able to add to that over time. So, but the example we'll do today is query contains action terms. So today our action term is PO. So, so we can see there's an explanation. It matches the start or end of a query. Action term is one of these uh, phrases. You can add multiple ones. So I will just add PO in here. Um, so then after we've defined our uh, conditions that trigger this query rule, we can add an, add an action. So you ha here's where you add a promoted result. So it's so um, purchase order now. Yeah, so although promoted result, you just basically add a URL. So I'll just say... Um, purchase orders uh, in here. So you also have this render the URL as a banner instead of a hyperlink. So that's quite neat in that um, what it can do is show like an iframe of that URL you're, you're displaying there. So with FastSearch previously, you had visual best bets. So this is, you know, you can uh, upload a, a piece of HTML to uh, say a location in SharePoint and this would then for that, when this uh, query rule fired, you can show some dynamic HTML with CSS and JavaScript um, in that promoted result. Uh, so let's say purchase order promoted result. So I like the name promoted result because it sort of very much describes what it is. All right. So add result block. So what we want to do now is add a block of results where the content type is uh, based on a, a purchase order. So if I click on add result block, we can come in here and first define a title. So we can change this to purchase order, order results for subject terms. And let's launch the query builder here. And what we want to do in, in this specific situation is uh, where the content type contains a specific value, right? So, 
So show so, all. So yeah. you just click show all and yeah. change yeah. what was in the current combo box. Yeah, yeah. So that was interesting. That's so it's still not showing me the, the content type I want because um, we're in a different site collection to where I defined it, right? right? So let's change it to manual value and I'll say purchase order okay. and then add that property filter. And just to be safe, let's wrap this in double quotes. Okay, so now we're, we're going to add a block of results where the results are filtered to a specific purchase order. Okay. So let's test that out. So there we can see purchase order results being returned in our query builder. So that's quite neat. So I'm happy with that. We'll click OK. So there's some other settings in here to show a more link and you know, choose a different uh, display template. So that's all fine. So let's save this query rule. And now you're going to test searching PO, are you? Yes, so okay. if we go in here and search for, um, I don't know, uh, project PO. So nothing in the everything result source, but I had selected it to only fire on this project. So we, we're seeing the promoted result here. So project right. must, must not have been picked up in here. So if I, I think I search for something like website, so there we, we see we've got hits right. for results, got it. but it's only showing content in here um, that are purchase order results, and it's, you, know, you can see the title there. So what's interesting with this result, right, is below that result block is where the regular search results are meant to go. Right. So a search like this would have returned nothing if this query rule hadn't been set yeah. up, because the text website PO does not exist as a, you know, as a string in any other content, so. So one, one of the things that we will want to be doing is educating users. Yeah. If you're getting zero results yeah. on things you think you should be, tell us because we can. Yeah, create action terms, yeah. yeah. So if you are creating these action terms, yeah, it'd be good if you um, educated your users that, hey, you can add these, you know, your company specific acronyms on the end and it's going to filter the content down to what you're after, right? So is there something even better would be if there was a way that we could look at what the most common zero result return value was. Yeah. You know? So with that, I believe, uh, like in, in previous versions, we had the ability to see, you know, what people are searching for that showed no results or results they didn't click through. So yeah, you you do that through the um, reporting and analytics aspect of, of searches and you know that's, it still requires someone to sit down and tune uh, the search experience. So one of the issues I have with a lot of organizations that deploy searches, they say it's crap but they don't invest any, any time for anyone to actually create you know best bets or keywords or check the reports on what people are searching for and tune it over time if you don't give it any love then yeah, yeah. it's it's not going to get better by itself right so, so are there some good reports in there that sh that will help you as a uh yeah so so those reports have been there since most 2007 days so things like you know um uh what are, what the most popular searches are but more so what are searches that uh didn't return any results and searches where people abandoned the search. So they search for something and then they must not have liked any of the results returned because they didn't click anything, right? right. So I believe okay. uh, in the previous version, it also had a suggestion for best bets. So it would suggest, you know, based on what people are mm -hmm. clicking on, what, what best bets you could set up, um, or it did with fast anyway. So that is, I guess, an overview of um, query uh, rules and uh, result blocks. So really powerful stuff there. Okay, M moving right along. So a quick uh, overview uh, of that demo. So we went in and we created a new query rule, called it PO, se selected the query contains action, query condition, put that PO uh, action term in there, and then we added a uh, uh, result block, which is filtered to content that is of the type purchase or content type purchase order. And then testing it and um, yeah, if in that specific result source on that search vertical for projects, it's showing purchase order results um, for that specific search term. So yeah, it's like uh, now we have a much more impressive uh, user intent uh, search engine that it you, you can configure it so that uh, it understands what 
a user is searching for and it shows mm. appropriate results. And I think that point about you've really got to give your search care and feeding yeah. to keep looking at the reports and improving it. Yeah. So yeah, keep, yeah, I mean, keep it, you know, if you want it to improve, though, to I mean, but that can also apply to SharePoint in general. A lot of time yeah. people implement a solution like an intranet, put it out there. Yeah. So moving on to the content search web part. So this, this is a, a great new piece of functionality as well. Uh, so an issue we've had with SharePoint in, in all previous versions is the site collection boundary problem. So that's where you've got, um, you know, typically organisations would start out with one site collection, but then they'd have to uh, create further ones because you've got the, the database limit. So, you know, you're a few hundred gigs of um, database size and oh, that database is too big, split it out into different databases because the site collection can only reside in a single database. That's right. Um, so you, for more real world uh, organisations, they uh, have terabytes of content. So you'd have to architect a solution that span spans multiple site collections. And that would cause problems around navigation and also aggregation of content. So that's where you, know, you roll up content that you know, exists in a specific site. Yeah. So now with this content search web part, it does what uh, we would previously do with the content query web part. That's right. So that was an out of box web part. You can drop the page and then edit some XSLT. The most, most commonly used one, I'd say. Yes, yeah. Um, and uh, aggregating content and displaying it on like you know more prominent pages higher up in the information architecture. It's a common thing that's done with SharePoint systems, right? You have like uh, the deeper you go, you got you know your document libraries and you know large volumes of content, but at the top level pages, people want to see those roll-ups. So are you saying where developers or power users would have selected content query web part, yep. they should be selecting the content search web part now? Yes, yeah. Um, and the added benefit of that is it searches across everything in your search index. Right. So an issue with the content query web part is, yeah, it was specific to a, a site collection, right? Um, and then sometimes people would get requirements around having to aggregate content across multiple site collections. and I mean, sometimes I'd see developers to try, you know, try and create multiple SP site objects and then query within each of them directly, and that's a very um, poor performing way to do it. You get yourself into a lot of trouble by trying to programmatically get into each site collection and do that sort of thing. So to do that sort of thing, you can use search as your data source. So, so this content search web part, instead of querying SharePoint via its object model directly, it uses search as our data source, which is a lot more performance and uh, performant and returns results uh, pretty much instantaneously. Cool. So that's the way it works. So now I'll get into a demo of the content search web part, and then I'll also show how we can um, change how that web part renders results uh, by editing or creating a new display template. So straight into that. So let's go to. Um, so here we had our project site collection, but if I go back to the, the, the home of, um, of my demo portal, uh, which is in a different site collection, I can come in and basically edit this page and add a web part. So if we go into content rollup, you can see there's the, our previous content query web part and the new content search web part. So do you think uh, developers and power users will use the content query web part and whether they should have used the content search web part a lot? Um, yeah, potentially. So I would you know, recommend that people use a, a content search web part because mm -hmm. it will perform better and allow you to show uh, a lot more content in them. So let me just add that to the page. And you can see immediately after adding that web part to the page, it's already showing me mm -hmm. results from another site collection, right? So let's edit that a bit more because, yeah, I don't want to show those big you know, thumbnail images. So just edit it. I can show some more items in here. Let's change it to five. Um, and if we go down, we can see uh, different types of control. So I want paging in there so we can page through all of the results we get. I'll change the item here to two lines, which is sort of a nicer uh, display. Yes. So these specific options here are called display templates, which, yeah, I'll get onto now. So let's apply that. Hit OK, and let's pub publish this page. Continue. OK, so there we go. We've got a nice uh, web part added to the page, and it's aggregating and showing content in there from, from another site collection. So that's quite easy. So you, know, you can add those to the page and, and configure them. So what if you want to, I guess, 
um, you know, control how, how they're rendered. So what we can do is um, go into our site settings, into our master page gallery, and in here now there is a folder called display templates. So if we click through on that, we've got uh, search related display templates. So if you if you wanted to change your, you know, the search results, uh, how they displayed, you know how we had the uh, result types that were linked to display templates? Mm -hmm. You'd come in here and create a new display template in here. In our specific example, we want to do content web parts. So here is all the different, I guess, display templates related to um, that content search web part. So what I'm going to do now is make a copy of one of these and then edit it um, and, yeah, show how we can create a new display template. All right. So what I've done is actually map that as a favorite in Windows Explorer. So I click on that and you can see the, the path is going to my SharePoint site, the master page gallery display templates. I'll then select content web parts. So you envision this is for developers only? Uh, yes. Yeah, so, so yeah, we're editing stuff in the master page gallery here, right? Mm -hmm. So. Uh, the proper way to do this and promote it between environments is to package it up in a feature, deploy it as a module, uh, you know, in a, uh, as a WSP and yeah, get it through there. In your development environment, yeah, you can go in there and, you know, play around with it. So what I'm doing now is it's akin... With without source control? Um, so the process I would use is you work in here and you edit it. Uh, and then you periodically copy it out of here and put it into a Visual Studio project to save it back. So it's similar to how how do developers develop a master page or a page right. layout in SharePoint. You know, you can use SharePoint Designer directly, right? But then that doesn't do source control. So right. you know, users sometimes use that as a quick tool and then copy it into Visual Studio and, and do it that way. Or you can set it up in Visual Studio first and then you know copy things straight through so that okay. you can make use of them. So what I'm going to do now is I think we had the item two lines uh, which we had selected previously. So I like that layout. It's like a smaller icon and nice text. So what I'm going to do is create a copy. That's harmful. Okay, copy here. Uh, preparing to copy. Okay, so I've created a copy. Let's just change the file name and I want to... Um, what are we showing? Two lines. Uh, let's call it item... Uh, project documents. So what I want to do now with this uh, HTML file that I've uh, made a copy of, I want to edit it. So I'll use my favorite uh, editing tool, Notepad++. Same for me. Yep. Uh, so let that launch. And so there we have it. So I've created a copy and uh, now I can go in here and edit this display template. Uh, so quick overview. Title, I recommend changing that. So uh, this is a project document, uh, project display template. Template, so that you can you know select it later on. Right. So in here we've got some some comments, and one is manage property mapping. Mapping. So what I want to do is add another field of information here. So I previously uh, had an example. If we go back uh, to um, my my site. Um, so I had documents in there where I had added a cost column and I added like a number figure to them. Uh, so if we go into our search schema, just to illustrate the point, I created a total cost managed property, uh, which is a decimal based managed property mapped to the total column from all those documents that I had previously indexed, right? So what I want to do is show that in, in that content, um, or in that uh, content by search web part. So the first step is I'll add it here. So let's go comma and add uh, total total cost and then close that off. So now that we've added that there, we can make use of it. So here you can see some HTML and then before that some JavaScript. So yeah, it's all HTML and JavaScript based. So you know you don't have to know XSLT to do this stuff. Um, so here we've got some snippet of uh, JavaScript and let me just copy this here. So this JavaScript I'm pasting in here, it makes use of that total cost managed property. Uh, and what are we doing? We're getting that value um, and then I'm declaring a new JavaScript variable. And if the total cost is not null, I um, add this, you know, 
that ticks. That ticks the start of it. And I've do, done something even fancy here where if the total cost is over $100,000, I add some extra text. So okay. it's expensive exclamation marks. Okay. So that's um, your kind of conditional yeah. formatting. Yes. <laughs> so with this, I mean, it's just a crude example to show that, you know, you can do custom JavaScript mm -hmm. in here, right? Um, and with custom JavaScript and custom HTML in SharePoint 2013, you can do pretty much anything you like, right? So if we go back, we can uh, grab this uh, field, uh, from here, so and then paste it in. So these are like uh, different placeholders um, that uh, that we use to use those values. So you'll notice here within the HTML we have uh, all of these different uh, placeholders. So let me just think where where this goes. Let me just put it down here, enter in here, and then paste it in there. So we're going to have output the. Um, the total cost value uh, in here. So I like it with each new version of SharePoint, Microsoft likes to define a new way to right. have separators. So we had our semicolon hash in previous version. So we got our underscore hash equals. Do you know why they changed it? I uh, don't know, it's just a uh, separator. You could pick, they could pick anything. They thought, oh, let's go with underscore hash equals. Yeah. I, I bet you there's a logical reason. Yeah. I just don't know. There it. always is, isn't there? All right, so let's save this. So when I save this new file, saves quite fast. What's going to happen behind the scenes is if I refresh this page, uh, or I refresh the master page gallery that had that in there, you can see where I had that project documents HTML file. Mm. SharePoint has now generated this JavaScript file, oh, right. which is what's used. So as you edit, edit these HTML files behind the scenes, SharePoint's doing its magic and wow. generating stuff, uh, which is quite neat. All right. So let's go and make use of uh, that. So if we go back to um, our site, go to our portal home. So where we've got our content query web part, let's let's edit it here, uh, edit page, and let's change its display template. So let's edit this web part, and now we'll see under item we have Sazai's project display template. Mm -hmm. Let me select that, apply it, and yeah, it's you know. Um, Working, working right away. So if I publish that, so there you go. So it it knows where it's detected those fields of values. Um, it has it is now picking up the data that's against the document. And so for these items where we've got a dollar value over a hundred thousand, it's added this expensive text mm. to that. So you no, know, based on that, you can do conditional formatting based on the logic and the value of data um, for each item. And so, yeah, it's a great replacement for the content uh, query web part and yeah, good okay. stuff. And Very so nice. all HTML and JavaScript based, mm -hmm. right? Which, yeah, Very um, you can pretty much do anything you like with that. So that's pretty cool. So moving on. Uh, so just a recap of that, I had a total cost managed property in there that I had mapped to a crawled property uh, to bring that value across. I went in and created a copy of an existing display template. I then edited that in my favorite editor uh, of choice and um, yeah, put in custom JavaScript and HTML to render that out. And there you go, um, selected it and uh, it works. So yeah. If you need to aggregate content between site collections, search is the best data source that you can use. So what's even more powerful with this content by search web part is it's not only across content that's in SharePoint. So with SharePoint search, say you can index uh, a lot of different data sources, say via BCS, you could index yes. database content. You could with uh, extra uh, connectors that some companies sell, index your records management systems. Yes. And uh, yeah, so you can, display, aggregate, and roll up and display content f that has been indexed by your search engine on pages. doesn't have to be SharePoint content. So that is qu quite powerful. Yeah. So moving on to the content enrichment web service. So uh, the content enrichment uh, web service is a new component that most SharePoint uh, search people wouldn't be familiar with. We had it with fast search for uh, SharePoint. Um, and the, the fast ESB product. And it's quite a powerful extensibility component. So in fast search, it was called the document processing pipeline or the pipeline extensibility uh, component. So what it is is basically when content is crawled before it's stored in an index, you can hook in there and process the content that's crawled and then put extra data 
into the search index. Uh, equivalent in SQL Server would be as you're entering data before it's stored, yep. it goes through a trigger. Yeah, yeah, and then you can manipulate the data and, and do what you want. So with that, you develop a custom web service. Mm -hmm. So you could run that on another server and uh, or a number of other servers. So that don't, don't, doesn't have to be a SharePoint server. As items are crawled, it can call in and send content to that server for processing. Um, so what's the quintessential example of why you would do this? Okay, so, so it's a few different examples of why you do it. So a real basic example is fixing up data, right? Okay. So say I'm calling content and, um, I don't know, things are tagged against a project. Mm. But then you might have content that just sits in a project site but not might not be tagged against a project. Or you have different systems where some might use an abbreviated project name and some might use a different one. You can pro process all of those variants and create a new uh, managed property right. that has the common value. So fixing up data is one example. And I'm seeing yeah. an awesome one there with the OCR. So yeah. you could pass it an image, it OCRs it and gives you back the text. And yeah, yeah. That. So, uh, yeah, so that's a good example. You know, uh, Typically, image search isn't that nice, but if your images contain text, yeah, send them to an OCR system, that'll send text back, that text will then get stored in the search index, and it will make those images searchable. So, so an, another image. example, I guess, is geocoding, yeah. right? Uh, so where you have don documents that are indexed, you can send, say, if there's addresses on those documents or uh, content within the document that describes the geographic location of yeah. that, send it to a geoprocessing component, so Bing Search, for example, is yes. uh, an example of something that does that. That will give you back latitude and longitude values, and you can then store that in your search index and on the UI end, build a search interface with a map that allows you to visually search for content using like a Bing map. Uh, so another cool one is audio and video transcription. So say if you uh, manage a lot of videos, um, there are systems out there that can extract or tr transcribe the spoken audio uh, from that video and then um, convert it to text. So you could pass on videos to a system like that, get text back, yeah. and then be able to search within uh, uh, the spoken audio or the spoken word within that video. So it allows deep search of raw data. Yeah. Okay, cool. Okay, so another cool uh, addition to the platform is recommendations. So. Uh, you know how we describe there's like an analytic system that's baked into the search engine? Um, there you can make uh, use of a recommendation engine. So it's where when you're viewing a piece of content, it can recommend other similar pieces of content. So it's similar to how like with Amazon, you, when you're viewing a product, it suggests you know other people, uh, other products that people have bought who also bought this product. Or another good example is LinkedIn when That's you're viewing a profile. I love, yeah, I love that one. When you're viewing a profile, it shows who, uh, um, you know, other profiles that the, the same people have viewed, right? Yeah. So it, it's recommending content based on uh, analytics. So that is uh, built into the search engine now. So you could use that on, you know, for example, public websites. If you're doing product catalogs, you can make use of that. It's uh, natively available in SharePoint now. So that's Great pretty feature. cool. So yeah, that's pretty much an overview of everything I wanted to go over today. Um, and yeah, there's probably a lot more than that, but you know, quite a lot of new awesome functionality that we have in SharePoint Set. So just a quick summary of it all. Um, we have the one new search engine um, that's based on both Fast and SharePoint Search, so you don't have to choose between them now. You have the one option, which is great. Um, architecturally, though, because it's uh, doing a lot more, you're going to need more servers and um, you know to scale out search a lot more to get the same performance that you would would have previously. Just because it's you know doing a lot more, but in general, SharePoint 2013s also you know requires more servers and resources now. So um, it's typical for each new version. So we saw with the the UI in the Search Center, it's significantly overhauled and improved and quite easy to yeah, uh, tune and configure. We have the nice uh, pre document previews show up in search results, so you can you know preview content before you actually open it. There's a nice query builder builder in there for uh, admins or power users who are wanting to be tuned, wanting to tune the search experience and you know filter specific pieces of content either in web parts or uh, when you're creating result sources. So with result sources, there are, it's a new term and it's a replacement for both scopes and federated locations. So you use it to create uh, a search experience over a subset of content in your uh, search index. 
with result types, it uh, provides like a mapping of different types of um, files or content to display templates. So query rules. So this was uh, one of the most impressive um, parts. Query rules, they're a replacement for our keywords and, and best bets that we previously had. And they can help you create an intent-based search experience that you understand what the user is after and target content and search results to that. Um, when you create a que query rule, um, you create conditions that fire that query rule, that trigger it, and when the conditions are met, you can a, either add a promoted result, add a result block, or change result ranks, or add multiples of those. So quite a powerful uh, piece of functionality. Result sources, result types, query rules, and the search schema can now be managed at multiple levels. So previously, all this config you had to do in your ser service application. Mm -hmm. Now, they've allowed you to do it in a site collection level and a site level. So if someone has the ability to you know, tune this at the site level, um, no, it's great. It's bringing more power to power users to be able to do a lot of this stuff themselves. But of course, you know, where you're giving power to users, you then have the nightmare of governance around That's how right. users are going to do this. Um, so we, we saw, um, you know, in my examples, I was going and uh, just going into site settings and it was all sub-site level for that specific search centre. So all that work I was doing there on my uh, query rules and result sources was just in that site and not available to be used oh, right. elsewhere, right? So it's important that, yeah, you're aware of what's going in, what's happening in different uh, locations. So keep managing and keeping track of that is quite important now that, yeah, there is that capability. So we saw a demo of the content search web part, which is great. It, yep. You know, it's great that Microsoft's finally done something to uh, allow us out of the box to be able to roll up and aggregate content across multiple site collections, solves that very big problem that SharePoint's had in all previous versions. Um, and the new display templates, they're great, HTML and CSS based. You don't have to learn XSLT or mess around yes. with your core results XSLT. And you have different display templates for different types of files as well. So that's a, a great for developers in being able to you know, tune and um, create a nice, compelling user experience uh, with search. We also have a new advanced functionality around the content enrichment uh, web service that allows us to uh, manipulate the data get going into our search index. And we have a nice recommendations engine um, that um, chain that can recommend content based on analysis of user behavior. So yeah, that brings uh, my presentation yeah, to an end and yeah, hope you enjoyed that. That was fantastic. And uh, I hope you enjoyed Cezay's uh, presentation. And if you like this content and you want some more, subscribe to the uh, SSW TV channel. And with that, this is Adam Kogan signing off for SSW TV.